This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain a comedy, romance, and sci-fi film called Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In San Francisco, high-speed helicopters and undercover surveillance trucks are in hot pursuit. Nick Halloway hides inside an electronics store, out of sight from agents equipped with thermal vision. Though the video camera cannot see him, he records a video to declare his invisibility and identity. He proves his physical state by holding up objects with no visible hands and chewing gum that floats in midair. Nick then begins his story with a day before it all happened. During a normal day at the office, Nick is on the phone when Kathy, his assistant, walks in and briefs him on his work obligations for the day. She mentions his required attendance at the OPEC conference at Magnoscopics, a company for which he represented shareholders. She also mentions that he hasn't begun the overdue oil shale analysis for Roger, which Nick dismisses. However, Roger, his superior, walks into his office. Quickly, Nick lies about the analysis and endorses the oil shale positions. Roger approves Nick's claims and leaves. As soon as he's away, Kathy comments that Nick is the biggest con artist she has worked for. He sarcastically thanks her for the snide remark and tells her to take the rest of the day off as he leaves work early. As he's exiting, Kathy pressingly reminds him of his appointments at Magnoscopics tomorrow, but Nick reluctantly tries to dodge his way out of the task and tells Kathy to attend in his stead. As a last straw, Nick pleads about making time for his other commitments like family and relatives, but Kathy reminds him that he has none. Nick heads to the academy club, where he drinks at the bar alone. Suddenly, his friend George persuades him to join his table. Nick refuses until he spots George's friend, Alice Monroe. Enamored by her beauty, Nick joins joins her at the table along with George's wife, Ellen. Later that night, Nick and Alice talk in private. They spark a heated connection that ends in intimacy inside the ladies' room. Amidst the tension, Alice tells him that she doesn't want to do anything cheap and meaningless, so Nick jokingly asks how much he owes her. They later bid their farewells to George and Ellen. Nick invites Alice for dinner, but she has prior plans. Instead, she invites him to lunch at the brasserie on Friday. They share a kiss, and Nick watches Alice leave. Speechless about his attraction to Alice, Nick returns to the bar and drinks his euphoria to the brim. The following day, Nick arrives at the Magnoscopic Laboratories conference but is hungover. Exhausted, Nick falls asleep during the presentation. Later, while searching the men's room, Nick finds a control room teeming with scientists hard at work. He asks one of the scientists where the men's room is, so the scientist stands to give him directions. However, the scientist knocks his coffee mug over the control panels, causing the electronics to short circuit just as Nick leaves. Nick walks down the hall and finds a steam room. He decides to take a nap for a few minutes, hoping it's enough to help him recover. The control room, however, is in complete mayhem. The conference room lights fluctuate, and the emergency alarm blares, forcing the people to evacuate. Meanwhile, Nick, the only one left inside the building, is still asleep inside the steam room. In Washington, CIA agent David Jenkins is inside a courtroom as a defendant for prior allegations. Later that day, he is requested by a superior, Warren, to fly to San Francisco and oversee the incident in Magnoscopic Laboratories. When Nick wakes up, he's bewildered at the remnants of the building left, ranging from jagged edges to items floating in mid-air. Terrified, he thinks he's still asleep or hallucinating. A swarm of police, paramedics, and people in hazmat suits examine the site outside. They find parts of the building still existing but invisible, so they move with caution. While examining the building with a camera, one man sees a chair move on its own, the same chair that Nick is sitting on. As Nick Nick ponders his situation, he realizes that he can't see his hands. Horrified, he picks up the phone to call for help but notices that he doesn't have a reflection. He goes up to the mirror to see for himself and puts on a hat that he found on a rack nearby. The people outside notice the floating hat, including Jenkins, who orders light to be shown upon it. Nick notices the glare and screams for help, but he can't be heard since there is a thick invisible glass window between them. He then runs out but hits an invisible obstruction, knocking himself unconscious. He is carried on a stretcher, while the people carrying him wonder if he's alive or dead. The group exchanges ideas about Nick's disposition, and suggests that he'll be a covert lab experiment. Hearing this, Nick springs up and starts asking questions. Jenkins stifles his men, but Nick jumps off the stretcher and declares that he won't be going anywhere until he knows where. Jenkins explains that Nick is in a state of molecular flux that could kill him. He asserts that if Nick wants to live, he must trust them. 
Suddenly, one of the men grabs Nick, and the others follow but fail to grapple him. Another agent aims a tranquilizer gun at Nick, but the building starts apparating and vanishes into thin air. Fearful of possible explosions, they all evacuate while Nick makes his escape. Soon, Nick stumbles upon a fumbling drunk stranger talking to himself. A taxi cab approaches, so Nick knocks the stranger unconscious and uses him as a puppet to get in the taxi. When Nick closes in on his apartment, he tells the driver to pull over. While pretending to make the man vomit by the sidewalk, he dismounts without suspicion. Nick then tells the driver to drive elsewhere with a stranger. Nick retreats to his apartment, hoping that his condition will wear off, though he fears it'll worsen. Meanwhile, Warren is desperate to find the mystery man and fears that he might be dead already. When Warren suggests taking the matter to their superiors, Jenkins refuses. Jenkins doesn't want to surrender the operations to the deputy director, since if he and Warren capture the Invisible Man, they can control the most exotic intelligence asset on the planet. Tempted, Warren agrees. Back at the apartment, Nick struggles to eat while listening to the news report about the incident. The news claims there were no recorded injuries or contamination, which he knows are false. He walks over to the mirror and sees his stomach digesting his meal in mid-air. Nick vomits at the sight of this. The following day, Nick is awoken by his assistant's call. She tells him that everyone at the office has been looking for him, so Nick excuses that he's sick. Afterward, his answering machine plays Alice's message, reminding him about their lunch date. After her voicemail, he hears another message from Jenkins, who found his name on the register at Magnoscopics. He looks outside and sees men surrounding the building. He puts on the same invisible clothes from last night and tries to escape the building, evading the agents. As he's about to get down from the ledge, one of the agents steps on his hand, and Nick nearly falls. Nick dashes to the lobby and infiltrates his neighbor's unit to escape through her back door. Hearing commotion, Jenkins and his associates follow him. Nick climbs over to the next building, where one of the agents shoots but hits a stranger with a tranquilizer instead. They catch up to Nick and persuade him to surrender, but Nick escapes. He wanders the city at night and struggles with hunger and not being seen by pedestrians, so he hides at the academy club. The next day, he locates Dr. Vax. The scientist responsible for the research at Magnoscopic Laboratory. Dressed like a homeless man, Nick tells him that he was at the venue during the accident. To prove this, he shows the doctor his invisible face, thus piquing his curiosity. Nick hopes for an instant solution, but Vax tells him that fixing him will take time. Agitated, Nick removes his hood, alerting the agents who are watching Vax. An agent shoots a tranquilizer gun but hits the doctor instead. Nick runs and strips off his costume to escape. Meanwhile, Alice calls Nick's office, but Kathy tells her that he's down with the flu. Disappointed, Alice ends up eating alone. At their headquarters, the CIA agents interrogate Vax on Nick's location, but he claims he doesn't know. Vax threatens Jenkins by exposing his unlawful way of tailing him at the park. Because of this, the agents prepare an injection, and despite the doctor's insistence that he doesn't know where Nick is, Jenkins notes that he already knows too much. Nick flees back to the academy club, where he falls asleep on the billiard table. He dreams about being cheered on as he plays the piano and tennis. Next, he walks into a room Room where Alice waits in bed. He removes his robe, only to find his nether regions invisible. He wakes up with a start. Later, he stalks one of the agents returning to their headquarters. He makes his way quietly to Jenkins' office and finds a gun in the drawers. He's cautious, slowly realizing what he's up against. He rummages through the file cabinet when he hears voices in the hall. He sits in the corner as a group huddles around Jenkins and brainstorms their plans to capture him. He falls asleep and awakens to Jenkins alone in his office. When Nick stretches his leg, his his bone cracks, leading Jenkins to realize that he isn't alone. Jenkins yawns to trigger a mirror response from Nick. He then switches the lamp off and locks the office door. Jenkins turns in Nick's direction and asks if he felt himself change during the accident. Nick threatens to rat him out to the press, but Jenkins asserts that Nick will be a circus attraction if he goes public. Jenkins intends to acquire him as an asset, noting that he could prevent wars and assassinate high-profile targets. However, Nick wants no part in espionage, so Jenkins highlights that they can't let him live if Nick can't work with him. Threatened, Nick holds him by the neck, but Jenkins fights back. Still, Nick punches him and takes his gun, aiming at his head as others storm in. Nick holds Jenkins hostage to escape. After exiting, Nick abandons Jenkins and throws the gun away. The agents try to pursue him again, but he's already gone. Learning that Jenkins already knows too much about him, Nick can't return to his usual places, so he retreats to George's summer house. He calls a grocery delivery store to stock up on food and liquor, insisting that he can only eat transparent food. When the delivery man arrives, he leaves a note on the counter with a tip. Unknown to the young man, Nick watches him as he checks the items around. While sifting through experience, 
expensive accessories, Nick whispers into his ear, scaring him off. For a few days, he settles at the summer house while plotting his new life. He intends to live off of stocks that he can manage remotely. He aspires to be the invisible tycoon and take vengeance against the agents who ruined his life. Later that week, Nick wakes up to a car pulling up in the driveway. George, Ellen, and Alice arrive for a weekend retreat, including another friend named Richard. Immediately, they notice that someone was occupying the house, so they search around to no avail. Richard notices a particular bottle of alcohol, which George recognizes as one of Nick's favorites. That evening, they enjoy drinks while gossiping about Nick. Richard postulates that Nick is on the run due to financial trouble at work, though Alice refuses to believe that Nick is a thief. Ellen adds that he might have shacked up with another man's wife in the house. Offended, Nick causes Ellen to spill her drink. Richard then speculates that Nick drowned himself in the ocean. When he makes fun of the idea, Nick pulls down his pants to humiliate him. Bothered by his friend's true thoughts about him, Nick retreats to Alice's room just as she prepares for the night. Seconds later, Richard arrives with a bottle of alcohol. Alice tells him that she's tired, but he professes his attraction to her. When she's not swayed, he weeps and shares that his wife left him. Alice awkwardly tries to comfort him, but Richard tackles her onto the bed. Nick throws Richard across the room to save Alice. Thinking that Alice pushed him off, Richard apologizes and leaves. Nick stays the night and watches Alice sleep, realizing that he's crazy for her. The following night, Nick moves to an empty house nearby and calls George's house when only Alice is there. Alice picks up, and Nick reveals his location. Alice cautiously makes her way to the house and finds Nick covered in gauze. He removes the gauze and reveals his secret to Alice, causing her to faint. At the Academy Club, Warren tries to halt Jenkins' operation before it spirals out of hand. Vax's disappearance has been noticed, and Warren threatens to cut their funding since they've had no tangible results. Hearing this, Agent Jenkins warns Warren from getting in his way. Meanwhile, Alice and Nick reconnect, though she advises him to go to a hospital. Nick refuses and instead wants Alice to open a brokerage account and purchase stock shares. That evening, Richard and George notice Alice grabbing a second plate of food. She takes it to a room, where Nick is hiding. George eavesdrops outside of Alice's door while Nick and Alice talk about the debacle with Richard last night. The following day, the others depart while entrusting Alice with the house. When George tells Richard about Alice's strange conversation last night, Richard warns that she might have schizophrenia. George assures him that she can be trusted, though he gives Alice a number of a therapist before saying goodbye. That night, Alice puts makeup on Nick's face to see him. Touched by the gesture, Nick tells Alice that it's nice to be seen again. With this, they have dinner at a restaurant like a normal couple. However, when Nick wipes his mouth with a napkin, the makeup gets erased, so Alice prepares to retouch it. Upon returning to the house, they hear helicopters in the distance. Nick spots Jenkins and the agents, so they hurry to the car and escape. At the train station, Alice purchases a ticket to San Diego, where they can take the next train to Mexico. Nick is distraught about involving Alice, so he tries to persuade her to leave before something happens to her. However, Alice isn't scared and asserts that she wants to stay with him. Suddenly, rain falls, and the drops allow Alice to see him partially. They hurry away from the rain and share a kiss, leading to them consummating their relationship at a motel. The next day, they board the train. Nick doubts if Mexico is far enough to ensure their safety. He ponders over Switzerland, where he can disguise himself under ski masks all year. That night, Alice tries to fetch dinner but stumbles upon Agent Jenkins, who seizes her. Nick is alerted by the commotion and gets tranquilized in the leg. Outnumbered, Nick runs and jumps off the train and into a river by the bridge. Soon, he returns to the city and records a video, which he sends to Jenkins. Eventually, Jenkins and Alice watch the tape where Nick urges him to set Alice free in exchange for himself. Otherwise, he will use the tape to expose his condition. After watching, Jenkins coerces Alice to help capture Nick. In insisting that it's in Nick's best interest. However, Alice isn't convinced. Nick soon calls Jenkins and reiterates his threat. He agrees to give himself up in exchange for Alice's freedom. The agents usher Alice outside, where they find Nick waiting across the street. As soon as Alice gets into a cab, the agents run after Nick, only to discover that it's George. At the taxi, Alice is shocked to see that the driver is Nick in disguise. She jumps in front and kisses him, but they soon get chased down. An agent rams her taxi into the curb, so Nick runs while Alice Alice knocks out the agent. While running, Nick removes his costume, showing only his head, which confuses the civilians. Just as Nick washes his makeup, Jenkins finds him, so he runs to a 
construction site. However, he trips, covering his jacket with sand. Jenkins chases after him onto the top of the building. Jenkins promises to make Nick whole again, but Nick isn't convinced. He finds Nick's sand-covered jacket at the edge of the building, where Nick threatens to jump off. Jenkins tries to appease him, unaware that Nick is only holding his jacket as a decoy. He pretends to get emotional and drops his jacket, causing Jenkins to also fall off the building. Alice approaches a sand-covered jacket, believing that Nick fell. Warren advises her to feign innocence to avoid trouble. She pays no mind to him as she searches for Nick's body. To her surprise, Nick hushes her and tells her to walk away with him as they make their escape. Months later, Nick and Alice are happily living in Switzerland, expecting their firstborn child. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.